Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. Uh, my name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 146, we'll take a look at an anti-pattern called the out-of-context scorecard anti-pattern relating to trade-off analysis. Now, you can get a listing of all of my lessons, a complete catalog of those, as well as view them through my website or through YouTube uh, by going to my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. Most of my material does come from these two books I wrote with my friend Neil Ford. And specifically, today's material comes from Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. In lesson 145, the prior lesson, I talked about modern trade-off analysis. As a matter of fact, as you can see, uh, that's the subtitle of our latest book, uh, Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. I wanted to kind of expand on Lesson 145 and show you one of the anti-patterns that emerge when we try to do trade-off analysis. I'm going to use a very common type of trade-off analysis we need to do continuously, and that is whether to use a shared service or a custom shared library, such as a jar or a DLL or a package, for the common functionality in my system. Now, we have other choices that we can do in terms of code replication or even service consolidation, but these are the two most common types of choices we have for shared functionality. So how do we go about identifying the trade-offs associated with these two options? One common way is to do what's called a scorecard. So we take criteria on the left-hand side and we analyze both options based on that criteria. Uh, for example, heterogeneous code doesn't work well with a custom shared library because for each type of language or platform we have, we have to rewrite the code in that language. Whereas a shared service could be in any programming language because it's just a remote call to get to that shared functionality. And so for heterogeneous code, the shared service is by far the better choice. But for high co-volatility, that means we're constantly changing the code. It turns out a shared service works a little bit better. True, we conversion with a custom shared library. However, with high code volatility, that means constantly changing our code. Because this is compile bound, with all my services, that means any change of any code within that custom shared library usually facilitates, at least at some point, a retest and a redeploy of all my services. Whereas I only have one service to deploy, the shared service for that common functionality, and high rates of change for that mean I don't have to redeploy any of my services. Now, <clears throat> however, one great advantage of the custom library is the ability to version changes. That's really difficult to do with a shared service. I may be able to do this at the API layer, but a lot of times a shared service is invoked from what we call east-west or inter-service communication, those communication in most diagrams going sideways, and I might not be utilizing the API for that. So it's very hard to version changes but fairly straightforward to version changes within a custom library. Now, dependency management becomes a very interesting aspect here as well. With a shared service, we don't have any compile time dependencies. So it's another service in our ecosystem that I invoke for that common functionality. Maybe it's a, some sort of calculator, like a, a tax calculator or a discount calculator. Whereas with a custom shared library, unfortunately, I have to maintain all of the dependencies because when I make a change, it directly impacts all of those. However, overall change risk tends to be lower with a shared library as opposed to a shared service. Because you see with the shared service, unfortunately, those are runtime changes. Once I deploy in production, that new functionality is used by all services. And if I introduce a bug, uh, that is a runtime problem. 
Whereas with a custom shared library, a conversion, and therefore through iteration, roll out those particular changes to that shared functionality. And finally, we have all of the operational characteristics. Uh, performance, um, fault tolerance, and also scalability are much better with a shared library than a shared service. And let me explain. First of all, you notice I have latency here. So that's one problem I have, and that latency is in terms of network security and also data latency. But also fault tolerance, because if I lose that shared service, then all of these become non-operational because I can't get to that common functionality. But notice with a custom library, this is a compile time binding. So there's nothing to fail in terms of that shared service. As a matter of fact, going back to the performance piece, uh, this is a method call right here. All right. And finally, the scalability. And because this is compile bound, my services can independently scale along with that shared functionality. But here, if my services started to scale up, I'd have to correspondingly increase the scalability of my shared service. And so operationally, the shared library becomes a little bit better option. Well, if we count up the number of pluses and minuses, we see that overall, a custom shared library is usually the better choice when dealing with custom functionality that needs to be shared across services. <clears throat> Don't fall into this trap. This is why it's called the out of context anti-pattern. You see, scorecards are useful for gathering this kind of information to do pros and cons, but there's a second step that's required, and that is our specific context. In other words, look at what the architect is saying here. We have services written in four different languages in our ecosystem. Operational characteristics aren't concerns for us. We're worried about managing frequent changes to shared functionality. That's our context. And if we go to our scorecard, we look at specifically what criteria is based on our specific context. And we find, in fact, it's heterogeneous code, high code volatility, and that management of dependencies for that shared functionality. And it turns out three against zero. So it turns out shared service would be the better choice for us. Scorecards are very useful in terms of, of categorizing the pluses and minuses, but just be cautious of even what is called weighting. W-E-I-G-H-T-I-N-G. -I In other words, um, put various weights on each of these. Uh, the, the thing I don't like about weighting certain ones is because if performance, fault tolerance, and scalability aren't important to me, then they shouldn't carry any weight at all. So if you are using weights and weighting each of these differently, uh, my suggestion is those things we don't care about Mark with zero, because they should be considered only those things within our specific context. So this has been Lesson 146, the Out of Context Scorecard Anti-Pattern. Just one cautionary tale when doing trade-off analysis. So thank you so much for listening, and stay tuned in two more weeks for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.